today i will discuss dual space and second dual space of a hilbert space now we shall prove a theorem which states that let h be a complex hilbert space that is h is a hilbert space over the field of complex numbers then the mapping t from h to h star where h star is a set of all bounded linear functionals on h defined by t of z is equal to fz z belongs to h is bijective conjugate linear and isometric in particular if h is a real hilbert space then h is isometrically isomorphic to h star let us prove this theorem it is given that t of z is equal to fz where fz is a bounded linear functional on h that is fz is from h to c such that fz of x is equal to inner product xz for every x belongs to h and norm of fz is equal to norm of z which we have seen in ries fresche representation theorem now first we shall show that t is on to by ries representation theorem for each f belongs to h star there exists a unique z in h such that f of x is equal to in a product x and z for every x belongs to h and by definition of fz this is equal to fz of x for every x belongs to h and by definition of function t this is equal to fz is equal to t of z of x for every x belongs to h and so uh, by equality of mappings here we find that f is equal to t of z so we have shown that if we take any element f in h star then there exists some element z such that t of z is equal to f so we can say that t is on to now we will show that t is conjugate linear for z1 z2 in h and for alpha beta in c that is the set of all complex numbers uh, as alpha z1 plus beta z2 belongs to h so um, by definition of t we have t of alpha z1 plus beta z2 is equal to f alpha z1 plus beta z2 and since these are bounded linear functionals on h so they agree on each element of h so we can write t of alpha z1 plus beta z2 of x is equal to f alpha z1 plus beta z2 of x for every x in h but this is equal to by definition of fz uh, this is equal to in a product of x and alpha z1 plus beta z2 for every x in h and since inner product is conjugate linear in second argument so this is equal to complex conjugate of alpha into inner product xz1 plus complex conjugate of beta into inner product xz2 for every x in h but this is equal to complex conjugate of alpha into fz1 of x plus complex conjugate of beta fz2 of x for every x in h and this is equal to alpha con conjugate fz1 plus beta conjugate fz2 of x for every x in h then we can use definition of t when we can write this is equal to complex conjugate of alpha into t of z1 plus complex conjugate of beta t of z2 of x for every x in h and since uh, and these two mappings are equal on each element of h so these map by definition of equality of functions these mappings are equal so we obtain that t of alpha z1 plus beta z2 is equal to complex conjugate of alpha t of z1 
plus complex conjugate of beta t of z2 that is t is conjugate linear. Now we show that t is an isometry as norm of t of z is equal to norm of fz by definition of t and by definition of fz norm of fz is equal to norm of z for each z belongs to x that means t preserves norms so t is an isometry now we show that t is 1 1 let z1 and z2 are in h such that t of z1 is equal to t of z2 this implies that t of z1 minus t of z2 is equal to 0 and that means t of z1 minus z2 is equal to 0 because t is conjugate linear as t is an isometry and z1 minus z2 belongs to h so norm of z1 minus z2 is equal to norm of t of z1 minus z2 but since t of z1 minus z2 is equal to 0 and norm of t of z1 z2 therefore this is equal to 0 and uh, norm of z1 minus z2 is equal to 0 implies that z1 minus z2 is equal to 0 that is z1 is equal to z2 hence t is 1 1 as we have shown that t is 1 1 on 2 that is bijective t is conjugate linear and t is an isometry hence t is bijective conjugate linear and isometry if h is a real Hilbert space then clearly t is bijective, linear and isometry and so t is an isometric isomorphism. In this way Hilbert space H and its dual space S star are isometrically isomorphic. That's why ries Prashe theorem is called representation theorem. Now the next theorem states that every Hilbert space is reflexive. Let us prove this theorem. Let H be a Hilbert space over field K where K is the field of complex numbers or the field of real numbers. We know that H will be reflexive if the mapping pi from H to H double star defined by pi of X is equal to phi X is an isometric isomorphism where phi x is a mapping from h star to k that is it is a bounded linear functional on um, h star defined by phi x of f is equal to f of x for every f belongs to h star. So we have to show that pi mapping is an isometric isomorphism. By natural embedding theorem we know that mapping pi is an embedding. So it is sufficient to show that pi is on 2. Let phi belongs to H double star. Since we want to show that pi is on 2, so we have to find some element in H such that pi image of that element is phi. Now we define a mapping G from H to K as g of z is equal to complex conjugate of phi of t of z where t is a mapping from h to h star which we have defined in the previous theorem and is defined by t of z is equal to fz and we know that fz of x is equal to inner product x and z for every x belongs to h first we shall show that g is a bounded linear functional so that g belongs to the dual space h star now we shall show that g is linear for z1 z2 in h and alpha beta in k alpha z1 plus beta z2 belongs to h so by definition of g g of alpha z1 plus beta z2 is equal to complex conjugate of phi of t of alpha z1 plus beta z2 
and since t is conjugate linear we have proved in the previous theorem so this is equal to complex conjugate of phi of complex conjugate of alpha t of z1 plus complex conjugate of beta into t of z2 and since phi is linear because phi is a bounded linear functional so phi is linear so here we can write this is equal to complex conjugate of complex conjugate of alpha phi of t of z1 plus complex conjugate of beta phi of t of z2 and since we know that for any two complex numbers z1 and z2 complex conjugate of z1 plus z2 is equal to complex conjugate of z1 plus complex conjugate of z2 so here we can write complex conjugate of um, these two numbers that is alpha times complex conjugate of phi of t of z1 plus beta into complex conjugate of phi of t of z2 and by definition of g we can write this is equal to alpha times g of z1 plus beta times g of z2 thus we have shown that g is linear now we shall show that g is bounded for each z belongs to h mod of g of z is equal to mod of complex conjugate of phi of t of z and since for any complex number z mod of complex conjugate of z is equal to mod of z so this will be equal to mod of phi of t of z and since phi is a bounded linear functional so using boundedness uh, mod of phi of t of z is less than or equal to norm of phi into norm of t of z and since uh, t is an isometry we have proved in the last theorem so here we can write uh, mod of g of z is less than or equal to norm of phi into norm of z and so we can say that g is bound Hence, G is a bounded linear functional on H. That is, G belongs to H star. By Reed's representation theorem, there exists Z in H such that G of X is equal to inner product X and Z for every X belongs to H. But this implies that complex conjugate of phi of T of X is equal to inner product X, Z for every x belongs to h and this implies by taking complex conjugate both the sides we have phi of t of x is equal to inner product of z x for every x belongs to h this implies that phi of t of x is equal to fx of z for every x belongs to h and this implies that phi of t of x is equal to t of x since fx is equal to t of x t of x of z for every t of x belongs to h star as the mapping t from h to h star is 1 1 and on to any element of h star can be uniquely written as t of x for x belongs to h so by replacing t x by f in 1 we get phi of f is equal to phi f of z for every f belongs to h star and by definition of phi z this is equal to phi z of f for every f belongs to h star since both phi and phi z agree on each element of h star so these two functionals are equal so we have phi is equal to phi z. Thus we have shown that for phi belongs to h double star, there exists z in h such that phi of z is equal to phi of phi z is equal to phi. That is phi is onto. Hence h is reflexive. Thank you.